welcome back and moving into our first conversation for today. We are moving very quickly into the national re-registration exercise uh, which takes place this summer and today we're going to find out all we need to know about how we can prepare and how we can participate in this process and joining us to provide all those answers is Josephine Tamai who's the Chief, Chief Elections Officer at the Elections and Boundaries Department. Good morning Good and morning. welcome. Good morning. I must say um, that it's so nice to have you in. It is a conversation that a lot of people, of course, were looking forward to because they want to get engaged. Uh, one of the things, and, I, and I'll start, just start by saying that uh, the youths of today, we're, we're, not, we're so laid back when it comes to the whole re-registration process. We're so laid back in, ter in terms of even wanting to find out information about uh, how to uh, register or the re-registration process. So let's jump into the registration process. What is it? Okay, um, when it comes to the re-registration process, um, re-registration is for basically for persons who need to get registered. Um, you have persons who are, are already registered who need to come in and do a re-registration. You also have those persons who have never been registered. Those persons, again, are invited to come in and register. Like you mentioned, yes, in terms of the youths, we have... Um, a low percentage when it comes to youths mm -hmm. and yes those are that is one of the target groups that we want and we are engaging in terms of the different youth groups to try to see how we could use these um, youths to help us to carry forward the messages yes. mm -hmm. because like I mentioned um, for persons who want to be a part of the process and a part of decision making in Belize voting is important I want to also stress that in terms of the re-registration, if persons do not come in to re-register, mm -hmm. then those persons will not be eligible to vote in any election. If you come into our office to register today, starting July 1st, you are still required to return and re-register. Wow. Yeah. Now, this is a process that has been long awaited right. and actually long overdue. Mm -hmm. um, I, I find that uh, perhaps we can look back into the history and see where uh, the percentages lie in terms of how many people actually come out and participate in this process? Well, um, when it comes to the re-registration, 1997 was the first re-registration mm -hmm. exercise that was conducted in Belize. And um, from the information that we gathered, because prior to 1997, the voters list stood at approximately um, 93,000 plus. Yeah. And when we had the re-registration, it, it only went down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Hence the reason this time um, we're looking presently at a voters list of um, a little bit over 204,000 persons. Wow. So we're double mm -hmm. yeah. the amount that we had in 1997. Mm -hmm. And um, we're expecting, yes, we know that persons have this, uh, um, are deceased. We know that persons have relocated, but we know we also have to target the youths and the other persons who have not yet come in to, mm -hmm. to register. So we're hoping that we would be able to capture at least uh, 200,000 persons. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to encourage persons to come out to these registration centers that we'll, we will be having during the months of July and August. Okay. okay. You know, and, uh, you know uh, let, me, let me touch on this because, and I wanted to, and I, I want us to clarify that not because you are registered already mean that you're not supposed to go in to re-register. Mm -hmm. Let's clarify this. And what is needed at a re-registration process? Okay. Um, first, let me start off by saying that um, in terms of the persons that are expected to visit these centers, these are persons who must be qualified to be registered as, yeah. as an elector. In order for you to be qualified, mm -hmm. one, you have to be 18 years of age and older. You need to be a citizen of Belize. Um, you can also be a citizen of a Commonwealth country, um, providing that you have resided in Belize or you are residing in Belize for a period of not less than 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, in order for you to be registered at a specific address in a specific constituency, you need to reside at that address in that constituency for not less than two months, and that is crucial. Because sometimes you have persons coming in to apply to be registered for a certain division and that person does not reside at that um, address. Mm -hmm. So again, we have to conduct our investigations and do checks. So in terms of the, um, 
the persons who are eligible, I want for persons to understand that you must meet those requirements. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're short of a day from the two months, then I urge you to wait until the following day when you have the requirement to come into the office. If you're not 18 years of age, then you cannot be, you're not eligible to be registered. What's the proof that needs to be provided in terms of uh, how long you've been residing in an area? Okay. Um, in terms of proof for you to be residing in the area, um, we request that persons would bring in a, um, utility. a utility bill for us to um, view. But we realize that it's not everybody within a household who has a utility bill. Mm. So not because you don't bring one to us means that um, you will not be able to get on the register because we have to go out and do investigations yes. to ensure that you actually reside here. Because we realize also you have some persons who might have five bills in a name, but they could only reside at one address. Yes. So those are things that we actually look for. Mm -hmm. And um, when persons come into the centers to get registered, um, persons have to bring in certain documentations. Mm -hmm. um, those documentation is um, you could provide your Belizean birth certificates along with your social security card, which has a picture ID. And if you don't have that, then you're required to bring along a picture ID, certified stamp and signed by a justice of the peace to um, certify that this is a true likeness of who mm -hmm. that person is. Mm -hmm. Because um, we realize that with a birth certificate, there is no picture ID. So if I want to give Marlene my birth certificate and Marlene pretends, oh, well, I'm Josephine Tamai, then we could see where problems exist. So we need to ensure that we have some verification in place to ensure that whoever brings along that document to us is mm -hmm. that person. A passport also a works? A passport well? is also required, a valid passport. And remember, with a passport, you don't need to bring a picture ID because the passport al already has a photograph of that individual. Mm -hmm. So we also request that you could bring your, um, your valid passport and also, when it comes to um, naturalized Belizeans, those persons are required to bring in their um, nationality certificates mm -hmm. or their passports, whichever one. Um, we realized that in the past, the nationality certificates did not have photographs on them. So for those persons who possess those nationality certificates that do not have a photograph on it, those persons are also required to bring in a picture ID, um, certified, stamp and signed by a justice of the peace. Mm -hmm. yes. And um, for those new certificates that have the pictures on it, then they are not required to bring an additional photograph. Again, um, when persons come in, they, their photograph will be taken at the registration centers. And I want to encourage persons because um, those photographs are what we use for our records and also to produce the identification cards. Sometimes we have persons coming in with um, sleeveless clothes and those things just to come properly attired so mm -hmm. you get a nice photograph because like whenever we take a passport for right them. whenever we issue an id we want for the identification card from, for the person to um look presentable of course now we understand that there will be people who will try to circumvent the system right. and i, I want to talk about some of the checks and balances that you've worked with with your staff i'm mm -hmm. sure they're doing training right. um to ensure that uh any person who presents information to say, I live at this particular area, or I am a valid Belizean, that they will be able to uh, be the first check that will be a part of this process. Right, um, in terms of that, um, we also have the immigration department and the vital statistics yeah. um, unit, which we're working very closely with in terms of doing verification. Mm -hmm. I want to emphasize that not because a person comes in to apply to be registered, that means that that person's name automatically get on the list. Um, like I mentioned, we have to do our investigations. Mm -hmm. When it comes to investigations, yeah. um, I know sometimes people would complain, oh, but this person does not reside there. Our law speaks to the chief occupant. That the chief occupant is the person who is responsible for, if the house is a rented house, for the payment of that um, rent. If it's a house that they own, who or the person who owns the house, mm -hmm. or whoever is in charge of the house at that time. By law, the chief occupant is required to furnish the election and boundaries department with information. Um, I must go further to state that if we w once we request information from that chief occupant, that chief occupant has 14 days in which they need to furnish us, us with that information. Mm -hmm. 
um, it is an offense for them not to give us that information. So again, election and boundaries officers have the authority to go in um, to do inquiries, even house-to-house -house inquiries, and request information as to how many persons be ab above the age of 18 who resides at that address. Mm -hmm. And if for some reason the um, persons give false information, again, that is an offense and they can be charged mm -hmm. and um, imprisoned at the same time. So we want to encourage the chief occupant to please provide us with accurate information. Will every person uh, be verified? Yes. What are some of with the... With actual inspections at homes and residences? Uh, yes, at homes and residences. When it comes Because to one of the things uh -huh. I, I wanted to, to touch on is that we've seen in the past where you have a household that has 15, 16 adults yes. um, and you arrive at the house and, and the chief occupant says, yes, all these people live here, but logically it's not possible. How do you, how, and, and these are done with a specific purpose. Mm -hmm. Political figures want people in a particular area so they can secure votes. Mm -hmm. How do you uh, work through a particular scenario like that where logic tells you, even if the chief occupant says, yes, all these 15 adults, uh, live in this one one bedroom structure well like I said when our officers go out they make a determination based on the um, information that they gather mm -hmm. because yes it speaks to the chief occupant but we also have other ways of doing investigations mm -hmm. and based on what that investigation reveals then the registering officer either decides if the person's name remain on the list or the person um, should not be on that list yeah. mm -hmm. But, like I mentioned, um, we have had instances whereby officers would go out and ask to view the premises. Mm -hmm. And then you have the persons owning the house who put up a resistance and said, but you don't have any authority to want to see inside my house. Mm -hmm. And again, sometimes, um, yes, I know you mentioned you, um, in many cases you can't have that much adults living in a house, but you do have some cases mm -hmm. where that actually exists in Belize. Wow. Well, but how do We've we, uh, it. you know, because... Um, like Marlene mentioned, there, there, there definitely will be ways of how to try and manipulate okay. the system by those who actually want to do re-registration. But what do we do to, uh, to investigate those who are actually out there doing the investigations? Then again, uh, when political season gets at a certain level, then we find ourselves in a position of having to scrutinize a lot of people. Mm -hmm. How do we do this? And one of the things that I want to encourage persons as well, because um, yes, we know that people will try and push to see how far yeah. they can get. But as individuals, as Belizeans, every person has a responsibility. Yes. Because when that new register is published, then persons who reside in that um, division can make an objection. If you know, even if that person's name is on the list, let's mm -hmm. say, for example, the chief occupant said, but yes, this person resides at that house. Because again, um, we can't tell you who lives in your house or not. You are the person who have that obligation to furnish us with true information. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, in a specific constituency, you would see a name of a person who you know, and you have the proof that that person does not reside there. Then you as an individual, you make an objection. You have 14 days from the day when we publish the list to make an objection. Mm -hmm. But again, you can only make an ob objection if you reside, if you um, are Remember. registered yeah. in that specific constituency mm -hmm. so as individuals we all have an obligation this is a process whereby all stakeholders are key mm -hmm. and every individual in this case is a stakeholder so like i said as belizeans i want to encourage persons we are the ones who need to fix it definitely definitely um when we talk about uh transfer season which is usually mm -hmm. the summer um but obviously the, you you mentioned to me the re-registration uh process makes that uh, not necessary. Um, usually when there's an election, that's where you start to see a lot of movement of new voters coming right. in. Uh, my question is, how will we be sensitizing the public to have them want to willingly come in and participate in this process? The next election is scheduled for 2020. People may not see the urgency of mm -hmm. it, but this process will take place in a limited time. Right. And again, um, we have a limited time because we know that the referendum date has yes. already been set. Yeah. So yes, we're looking at election 2020, but we're also looking at the um, referendum 2019, right? So again, we're hoping that that will be one of the um, areas whereby persons will see the importance of it Absolutely. to come out and um, we register. We will be doing our ads, doing our publications, trying to reach out to the villages that we know that um, are difficult to reach 
And again, I want to state um, that you have persons who are um, of old age and persons who are physically incapacitated who might not be able to reach to these registration centers. As long as these persons contact our registering officers, we will go out to those persons. Yeah. It is our obligation to reach to those persons as best as we can. We will be having registration centers. Um, we have already identified a little bit over 100 in terms of the, um, countrywide. Because again, it's not that you go into the regular election and boundaries offices. Yeah. We will be publishing these registration centers. Mm -hmm. And so um, we want for persons to take advantage of us, of the um, registration centers, because that is the time we'll have the manpower to deal with the um, number of persons that we expect to come in. Mm -hmm. What's I appreciate what you yeah. said, that, that, and I believe that that can be the driving force between uh, so that Belizeans can come out and participate in this process because they need to be registered right. in this process to participate in next year's referendum. Mm -hmm. And we've met with political parties again and um, so far the indication is that the political parties will be uh, mobilizing persons. Okay. So again, that is one area where um, we are seeing benefits. I know that sometimes people might say, oh, but why are the politicians? But this is, this is basically just to come out and um, re register, register. Yeah, re register, right? So um, again, because we have that commitment, I'm seeing that persons will come out. And I also want to encourage persons, don't wait for somebody to bring you out. Like I said, it is your interest. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we are using this time around is to, is to say that um, your right to vote depends on it. Yeah. So in terms of re-registration, if you don't re-register, you don't have a right to vote. Mm -hmm. So you're automatically giving up the power that you have. Yeah, and, and again, we must stress that not because you're registered already mean that you're not supposed to re-register. You must re-register in order to vote. Yes. Now, what have we noticed would be uh, some of the uh, some of what would stop these processes or, or wanting for people to come on out? And what have we done to, uh, to try and rectify those situations? So we have more people out there. Right. Well, one of the things, and I know that um, persons are already trying to get their documentation, I want to encourage persons that don't wait until the 1st of July, when the center is open, the 2nd, which is the Monday, don't wait until then to um, try to obtain your documents. Mm -hmm. You could apply for a birth certificate um, if you have a valid passport. If it's expired, you could also apply for it. So get your documentation from now. Um, the law provides for exceptional cases, not for every person. Um, for those persons who are not able to obtain their documentation, they, we will have a form at the registration centers that those persons will be able to fill in mm -hmm. and provide us with like their name, address, date of birth, parents' information, all the information that is required that we will have to um, verify, either with the Vital Statistics Unit or the Immigration Department. Mm -hmm. So again, um, not because persons can't maybe afford to get their documentation. It's not to say that those persons will not have an opportunity to get registered. Mm -hmm. Those persons will be given the opportunity, just that um, for us at Election and Boundaries, the process will take a little bit longer because we need to do the proper verification yeah. before that person is eligible to um, get on that list. This is a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to, what we say, cleanse the list as yes. well for people who passed on, people who were never eligible, or people who were registered in the wrong areas. Mm -hmm. Explain to us the scenarios under which a person would not be allowed to be registered as a voter, even though they're already registered. Okay, um, like I mentioned, you need to meet the qualifications. Yes. You need to be 18 years old. If you're so let me just say, if I already have a voter's card, it doesn't mean that I will automatically get no. one. No. Like, like we mentioned, this is a new exercise. Yes. It's cleansing completely. Yes. You have an entirely new register that will be produced. So in terms of whatever documentation, whatever information you provided in the past, this is a complete and thorough cleansing. <laughs> so you're basically starting from scratch. scratch. All our records will be disposed of once the um, new registers come into force and it's not to say that um, we use what it is that we have people were clamoring and saying you need to re you need the re-registration exercise we need a re-registration and sometimes people were asking are asking um can we bring in as a photo id or election and boundaries identification card mm -hmm. but we're saying that if we're serious about clean cleaning the list and if we're saying that the list was so terrible, that's mm -hmm. what people are saying, not, mm -hmm. a, not what I'm saying, then um, why go back to what it is that we had? Mm -hmm. So we, it, if we're starting new, 
then we need to ensure that persons bring in new identification and new documents to us. So as of July 1st, we're all new voters going in for that card for the first time, proving right. that we are eligible. Right. What about for Belizeans living in the diaspora? These people, are, probably you exhausted your holiday time. You're not able to uh, come back home probably in another year, but you want to take part in the whole voting process in 2020. What can they do? Okay. Well, remember one of the um, qualifications is you need to reside at that address for not less than two months. So for persons living abroad, they have not resided in Belize within a constituency in the last two months. Mm -hmm. So those persons will not, not meet the criteria. Wow. The only people would be persons on official work duty. Right. Uh, because in terms of residence, the Constitution speaks to residence. Mm -hmm. And it um, defines residency if you're out on the service of the government of Belize, if you're out um, for some medical attention which is um, beneficial to your health, mm -hmm. with approved by a medical practitioner, again, those persons and for persons who are um, approved course of studies. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, those three categories, if those persons are out, then it is not considered that they are not residents of Belize. They are still a resident of Belize. What type of proof do they have to provide, for example, or students who are studying at this time? Yes. Right. For students, they have to provide proof that they are a student. Okay. So we will need to get these um, records from the school to show that you are a student. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I could just, I could, I could see the uproar because we know how our people are. <laughs> That's a fact. So we, I could see the uproar of uh, Belizeans coming home and saying, you know what, I born here, I have a Yes, I live out there. I have a Belizean passport, though. I must be able to vote. So this is something that you guys have to be ready right, yes. to take on. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, we are ready because the investigations will reveal the residency. What about the objection process? I, I want to... Um, Typically, we, we only see the political parties getting mm -hmm. involved in this process. But as you clearly pointed out, any individual mm -hmm. can raise an objection. Talk to us about what the law provides for in that area. Okay. Um, right now, in terms of timeline, right, we're looking at, we're having registration centers open, and we're using the schools, the primary schools, most of all, um, to use as registration centers during the months of July and August. Mm -hmm. In the month of September, then we go back to our regular registration offices. Mm -hmm. We're also looking at when persons go back to the, uh, when we go back to the regular offices, that we will have a close off date at the end of September, right? And so we're hoping that um, by the end of October, we will be able to have the publication of the lists. Once we have that publication, then we have 14 days from the date of publication mm -hmm. for persons to either um, file an appeal or file their objections mm -hmm. or for any clerical errors, even to um, have the period whereby in terms of disease, because people could come in and register today and for some reason, unfortunately, before the process yeah. is over, they have passed away mm -hmm. and um, for any rectification as well. So you have that opportunity for 14 days after that publication for persons to object. And again, remember that you can only object if you are a person registered on that list for that specific constituency. Mm. Wow, it, 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 I'm trying to, uh, you know, we're trying to make sure that everybody takes heed of the situation because it is a very important, important. process in our, in, in of course, in our, in our history. Now, one of the things that I, I, I wanted to touch on as well uh, is the fact that, and it was impressive, mm -hmm over the past municipal elections using the website mm -hmm. from, the, uh, from the Elections and Boundary Department. Information is very important. Mm -hmm. Do we find this information on there? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the list itself, um, we're still seeking legal advice because at one point in time we remember that we had posted it and some people complained and said it's my personal information, I don't want my name, my date of birth, my address. Yeah. because of identity theft and a whole lot of other issues, mm -hmm. right? So again, those lists um, we have at our offices, we'll be, we will be posting them at the um, police station, at the magistrate courts, and areas where persons are able to view yeah. the information. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and I believe uh, in, in terms of where you can go register, will it be designated based on uh, what constituency you, you reside in? Yes. We will be having um, the registration centers. For the most part, they're basically where the um, polling stations are. Mm -hmm. okay. But like I mentioned, it won't be at all polling stations. But we will have at least one or two centers within 
every constituency which will be there permanently for the two month period. Um, apart from that, we will also be having teams going to various villages. We know that um, in terms of the village, we have, they're unique in their own way. Some villages you could only visit on Sundays because persons are out for the most part. Yes. So again, this is an exercise that is not confined to an eight to five, Monday to Friday. Yeah. It continues from Sunday to Sunday, mm -hmm. right? So we will be out in those villages um, registering persons. And again, I want to advise persons to look out for the um, announcements that we will be publishing mm -hmm. and on the radio as well in terms of uh, persons to know w the dates that we will be at those specific villages. And the process must be done in the office. There's no online option. Um, under what, what circumstances can someone send another person on their behalf to do so? Well, there's no circumstance for persons to send another person. The law is clear when it says that the applicant must, with his or her own um, hand, mm -hmm. place his or her signature on that application in front of the registering officer. Wow. Um, and if I am incapacitated in any way, I reach out to the Elections right. and Boundaries Department and you will and come to will, me yes. to be able to complete the process. Right. There's no early bird registration. Everybody has to w wait until July 2nd to go right. in. Now, let's talk about some of the, the challenges that you foresee in, in being able to execute this process. 200,000 mm -hmm. uh, people coming in, that's your hope, in, in three months. It's Far it's a far bigger workload than the Elections and Boundaries Department is accustomed to, yes. even though you do quite a bit of work. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about how you will be able to uh, get the registration process complete, and most importantly, because I think it's a very big concern for all Belizeans, that the proper verification will take place. Right. Um, well, the exercise requires that we hire additional staffing, mm -hmm. which um, we will be doing training with those persons mm -hmm. before July first. So those persons will be trained in terms of how we um, conduct the exercise. I also want to ask persons to come in with their documentation. Um, give us the information that we request. Sometimes people complain and say, but you are asking too much questions. But those are the same persons who complain that, oh, we want to clean up the list. Yeah. But just bear with us, because in order for us to do a proper investigation and for us to be able to find your address, we need to get information from you. So. Um, if persons come with their documentation and provide information to us, we see a um, smoother process whereby the lines are moving much faster. Mm -hmm. So um, again, every individual can contribute to that. In terms of the verification, like I mentioned, um, we have commitment from the Immigration Department, we have commitment from the Vital Statistics um, Unit that they will be able to have persons to assist us in terms of doing verification. Mm -hmm. So again, um, that will be happening on a weekly basis because as soon as we get those information we compile it, we send it to them to do verification mm -hmm. we're actually um, moving into a process <coughs> whereby we will be able to view certain information from vital stats um, for ourselves mm -hmm. so again i know that is one of the areas whereby the political party stated that but if somebody comes with no documentation we're not able to see that that person is being verified mm -hmm. so we have given the opportunity to them for them to come into the office and actually see the verification happening. And um, whenever we finish, we were going to um, print those out and put it on the application form. So the political parties will have an opportunity. Because again, when you go to the registration centers, um, the political parties who have representation in the house and those who intend to contest an election are able to have scrutineers present mm -hmm. at those stations. Okay. So you will be seeing those persons as well. Um, the scrutineers are not able to question the um, persons applying to be registered or to handle their documents in any way. Mm -hmm. So all our officers will be provided with an identification card for persons to know these are the official persons. Mm -hmm. So again, like I mentioned, the process, people are seeing exactly what is happening. They have the opportunity to be there at every step of the way in order to see what is happening at the registration centers. There is a larger national issue uh, that's being discussed, and that is the status of Guatemalan nationals mm -hmm. who have uh, received uh, Belizean nationality. What is the instructions of the Elections and Boundaries Department in how and whether or not you will be able to register this particular group of persons? Okay. Well, like I mentioned, in terms of the verification, um, the criteria again, if you have a nationality certificate, 
you are a Belizean, you're given Belizean nationality. Mm -hmm. um, that does not come from Election and Bombshell Department. Once you come to us with a valid document, um, then we will take your application. It's not to say that you automatically get on that list. Like I said, Immigration Department will be doing verification for us un unless and until um, the Immigration Department give us some indication that these certificates have been revoked for whatever reason, then we're not able to um, tell those persons that you cannot get on the list because then we'll be looking at another challenge in terms of under what authority or what authority do we have to disfranchise this person or to say that these persons are not eligible to vote. Mm -hmm. So I know that um, in the press conference, the Prime Minister mentioned it's something that they're looking, looking at. at. So um, yeah. again, whenever that goes to Immigration Department, mm -hmm. then they will make a decision and inform us if these persons are, um, if those certificates are legitimate certificates or not. So this is a very key point. So these persons who have a Belizean nationality of uh, who are Guatemalans right. uh, can go in and register. Right. However, if there's a decision made to reassess mm -hmm. or to investigate further, then that will be uh, a, a decision handed down to the Elections and Boundaries Department. Right, and also um, not because a person gets on the list. If for any reason, um, months from now, whatever decision is being taken, mm -hmm. And that means automatically that those persons do not qualify any longer. Mm -hmm. So again, we will be able to remove those persons from the list. They will be disqualified at that point. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And in terms of the timeline, because from 1997 right. was the last time of a re-registration right. process, which that's 21 years. Mm -hmm. It's just about 21 years. The population have grown so far since then. Uh, drastically mm -hmm. the, pro the the timeline between uh, for the two months that we must re-register leading up to now 2019 mm -hmm. when all this is needed for a referendum do we find this timeline to be uh, appropriate well um, and that's the reason why we're looking at getting additional staffing mm -hmm. and even in terms of the investigation and I want to encourage persons to come out early because the earlier you come to us, then we have more time to do the investigations. Because even when the um, new registers are published, mm -hmm. if for some reason we're not able to verify that applicant within that specific period of time, those names will not automatically get on that list for the new register. Until they're verified. Until they're verified. Now, one of the questions we commonly hear is whether or not as, uh, people who have been deployed to different workstations, mm -hmm. immigration officers, customs officers, yes. and even other uh, places of employment may place a person in an area for a specific period of time. Where should they uh, use as their official residence? Where they should register? It's still the two-month window that you're looking at? Yes. Wow. Okay. Okay. Still the two months. All right. We've so clarified. Well, uh, I wanted to, to close off just allowing us to, to go over the, the details. So starting July 1st, officially July 2nd, Second, right. the areas will be open. Remind us again what we need to bring in um, and some of the rules that we must, we must take into consideration. Okay. I also want to add, like, for persons who are um, married, mm -hmm. that um, mm -hmm. the females, if you want to be registered in your married name and you don't have produce an identification card in that married name, then you must, you are required to bring into the election and boundaries office your original marriage certificate issued by the Vital Statistics Unit. Okay. Um, for persons who have changed their name, right, those persons would come with a deed poll. Again, the deed polls are only accepted with your, um, the deed poll is only accepted with your, um, your birth, certifi stuff. birth certificates. Mm -hmm. You can't bring only a deed poll. You yeah. have to have your birth certificate attached to that. Sometimes people want to um, detach it, but yeah. it's not accepted, okay. right? So again, coming back to what it is that we require, um, Social you need to be 18 years mm -hmm. of age, mm -hmm. a Belizean, mm -hmm. or a citizen of a Commonwealth country who has resided in Belize for at least 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, you need to reside at that specific address or in that constituency for not less than two months. Right, so that is key. Um, persons are expected to bring either their birth certificate along with a photograph, mm -hmm. um, certified, signed and stamped by a Justice of the Peace. Mm -hmm. We also accept your valid passports. Mm -hmm. For um, naturalized Belizeans, you need to bring in your nationality certificates. 
And again, remember for those who do not have the for those certificates that does not have the photograph, you, you are required to bring in your photograph. Mm -hmm. And it has to be authorized has by to a be GP. Right, right. And again, you all know that the exercise in terms of the justice of the peace that the um, Attorney General's Ministry is looking at ensuring that they update the information for us. Yes. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing yes, this yes. information as uh, we all prepare to go back to the Elections Boundaries Department to ensure that we uh, execute our own civil rights and re-register. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we'll be joined by representatives of the Institute of Creative Arts to talk about the Festival of Arts. Okay.